So let's do a bit of a deeper dive into convertibles specifically. So what is the convertible for those of you who haven't done them yet? It's basically, this is a, a gross generalization, but it, it's basically a type of contract where you, know, you go to the investor, you say, can I have some money, please? And at some point in the future, I'll give you some shares if I don't fail in the meantime, right? That's essentially what it is. And you say to the investor, it's too soon to talk about valuation. I'm just on quite early stage. You know, I, I need a bit more fraction. It's too soon to spend the months and months that it will take to do a full equity funding round. And we'll, we'll cover why that is. It's too soon to spend all that money as well on lawyers going through a, a full equity funding round. And it's too soon to distract me uh, as a founding team with governance, full board, and all, 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 all that stuff that comes with an equity funding round. Let's not waste time. And let's not waste money. And let's not then do some mature track record to, 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 to base evaluation on. Just give me the money. And and wait until I grow to the point where I pick up all of these things and go to the market and get an evaluation for my equity. Uh, but obviously I understand that's more risk for you as an investor. So in return, I will give you typically a couple of things. One is I'll give you a discount on that future round. Uh, so when I do go to the market, whatever my value is, you get a discount to that. Typically it's 20%, it can vary. And then on top of the discount, I'll also give you uh, what we call valuation count, which is to say, yes, it's 20% to whatever value I'm going to be when I do the round, but up to a maximum X dollars. And the reason you do that is things go gangbusters for you since you signed the convertible and the business skyrockets, the investor and their capital were part of that. And you need to share the upside in that kind of high upside scenario beyond just the discount. So if you're hitting up against the valuation cap, effective discount, of course. So if you're raising a double the valuation cap, the investor is converting at a discount, 50%, not 20 So that's basically it in a nutshell. Give me some money, wait for the business to grow. Hopefully I'm successful. If I am, I'll give you some shares and I'll give you some economic compensation via the cap and the discount for the higher risk and going in early, time value, money, all of that. And then there's a couple of other things that go around that depending on how we structure the convert. So you could have certain convertibles that say there's a time period and at the end of it, you have to repay me. That's terrible for startups because the money's of course gone, but if you just will convert, oh no, it would technically work like that. It's very rare to see that. Or you could have a twist on that, which says there's a time limit of two years. If you don't do a round, maybe you will repay me, but maybe just, yeah, I can force you to give me shares. So that's what we call conversion rights. Okay. A little more reasonable, but also quite problematic because the whole point about waiting to do a full equity funding round, you'll see what's involved in that is to flesh out, not just evaluation, but to flesh out a whole bunch of governance terms and investor the DA terms, so to flesh that out with the lead, who's typically a VC, who's typically hiring lawyers. It's a process at the end of which you have a set of documents with a certain governance framework that then all the convertible holders tag to essentially by saying, I'm going to just find out for the same terms. So if you do a forced conversion, you haven't gone through that process. And so you have to sit down and figure out with your investor, your verbal investors who might be uh, perhaps not financial investors who may not have external lawyers and they might do, uh, to try and go through like a mini equity process without actually any new cash coming through the door, just to come up with that governance framework, the basis on which you can issue shares in the conversion. So it looks nice on paper, but it's quite problematic and right. Yeah, those are, I would say, the key parameters of the convertible instruments universe. And in terms of the types of convertibles or the name that you might see out there, obviously there's the convertible loan, and then you'll hear the SAFE, which stands for simple agreement for future equity. And then you'll hear the term KISS sometimes, it's simple security, SAFE is something that was created by uh, YC later, uh, but is now probably the most popular form of convertible. KISS was originally traded by 500, but again, uh, a lot of other investors use it or good old fashioned convertible note, or convertible loan. Generally speaking, convertible loan is, is one that carries interest as well. Again, not usual that you repay it, but it just add, it adds to the investment amount. So if the loan is outstanding for two years, there might be two years of interest and so you're giving them shares worth the investment amount plus two years of it. Uh, whereas the SAFE doesn't. Generally, a convertible loan has 
uh, an expiry, a maturity date. Uh, again, hopefully you often you pay, but to maybe perhaps force a conversion. Generally, I say it doesn't. So I say it has no interest and it's completely uncapped in time. So it's a more startup friendly one, I would say. And then a kiss is a bit of a mix of the two. It's like a say, but it's got a maturity. And again, the other thing to watch out for is no matter what they're called, people change these things in them. So you should actually leak them. Somebody could call it a safe and add interest or somebody could call it a convertible loan, but actually it's a safe. So don't get too hung up on the name, but make sure that you go through the actual terms and if in doubt, maybe do consult somebody. And then just to, we've covered this, but just to summarize why a convertible, it's significantly faster. So if you've got an investor who is coming in and telling you I want shares, which happens a lot in the region, maybe they're not, they haven't invested in startups before, they understand shares, that's what they've done, you know, in SME context or in a large traditional business, and you're super early stage, then you have to, and you're also raising a small amount, then you have to explain to them that an equity, if I give you shares, it's going to take anywhere from three to six months, it's going to cost tens of thousands of dollars in fees. And that's not very efficient use of that account. And it's going to end up with a structure where I've got reserve matters and veto rights for investors and board meetings and all the rest of it, which is a bit of a distraction. It's actually in your benefit as an investor and investors who are experienced in this space understand this to not put me through that because they're at the higher risk that you're going to burn out the cash and take out my bandwidth. Uh, when you should be wanting me to invest every dollar that I can into the business and to focus just on getting it to the next day. Uh, so speed, of course, no negotiations really. If you're going to negotiate an evaluation cap, discount typically just lands around 20%. And then you should just use one of the standard forms that are out there. Don't waste time. If somebody's marking it up and adding, I want a board seat and this and that, and these the veto rights, and then they're, they're not in the right headspace for a convertible. Um, and also you don't need to actually issue shares, which means you don't need to do KYC on them. You don't need to do filings, which costs money, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just generally a much, much simpler, clearer way. And just recognizes the reality that at a particular stage in business, uh, there isn't really any advantage in all these pages to pages of, of rights, right? It's just about getting business to the next day. But obviously on the other hand, this does mean that investors have very limited rights. It's a much higher risk instrument for an investor, which means you're limited, generally speaking, by how much you're going to raise. You're not going to go out there and get $10 million. Uh, your typical ticket size is aren't going to be, it can be 50 grand here, a hundred grand there. You might raise a million, two million, three million. That's pretty much your, your general unofficial cap. If you're the type of business that needs a lot more capital than that, then you're mature enough to go through the equity. Program. There's also potential for material dilution because you're not solidifying your dilution at the time you're issuing those convertibles. It all depends on the valuation you get in the next equity round and you can't control that. So you can find yourself in a situation two years down the line when you go around and all of a sudden you've given away 60% of your capital or something like that. I say that raising money on convertibles is like spending on a credit card. And if you don't keep an eye on it, you get a nasty bill at the end. So it's easy to find these things and see the money. You're in, but you have to keep an eye on, run a scenario, import scenario modeling. If I do an equity round at this valuation, I would raise this much, and this is the cap and this discount. What does that look like? What's my dilution as a founder? And make sure that you stay within a sensible range and don't overdo it. Convertibles. And remember, this is a valuation cap, but there's no valuation bar, right? But if you raise that a million dollars, they're still getting uh, their shares at 800000 know, dollars or 20% discount. So it really all depends on the valuation the next one. And then there's the misunderstanding amongst the parties because you're not going through that process of fleshing out those terms. Now you actually have to do that later. So you're kicking the can down the road on what the investment terms are. But over the whole, over the whole I would say there's really no reason not to raise funds by convertibles if you are early stage business. I think that's a waste of time for all the reasons you mentioned to go through an equity funding route. All right. Um, so we've gone through, gone through all these concepts. So that's convertibles. 